This is Channel 4. Now, the first part of Fairly Secret Army. Geoffrey Palmer plays Henry Kitchener Wellington Truscott, a retired major at the crossroads of his life, and feeling more than a little sorry for himself. Bodied bod, British nation in its hour of need at the service of. Next army officer, are you? Good Lord, how on earth did you guess? Well, trick of the trade, I suppose. I want a job. Uh, do anything, almost within reason. Name? Uh, Truscott. Harry Kitchener Wellington, Major Queen's Own West Mercy in Lowland, has retired. Fighting fit and raring for employment, sir. I don't think I've got anything at the moment. Marvellous, isn't it? Fight for your country. Risk your life against the dreaded Hun. Country says thanks very much. Two small points. One, the dreaded Hun isn't the dreaded Hun anymore. He's one of our best chums now. Two, you're too old. Push off. Can you sign this, Said to the adjutant. A bit thick. Um, he said that's why we're asking you to push off. Well, admit it. Not the brightest. And that's all for now. Army all brain boxes now know how to work computers. Can't fight except on Tuesday mornings when it's our turn for the computer. Sorry, waffling. Up to your eyes, here I am taking an absolute age. Age? 53. So, at the end of World War II, you were 14? Yes. A bit young to be fighting Germans? All right. Didn't actually fight them in so many words. Story of my life. Verge of manhood, peace breaks out. Overpaid, jumped up Clark, sitting on his backside all day, laughs at me. I didn't mean you. I meant some, uh... A hypothetical cove I might meet someday. Now, I wouldn't call you an overpaid, jumped-up clerk sitting on his backside all day. It might prejudice my chances of getting a job. Yes, it might. Quite. Listen. On face of it, my life a failure. But deep down, inside of this head, ideas, plans, dreams, well of goodness waiting to be tapped. Tap my well, young man. Do you think you're unique or something? Do you think everybody doesn't feel like you? Do you think I get job satisfaction out of telling people who tell me they want job satisfaction that I haven't any jobs, let alone any satisfaction? <laughs> Only one thing keeps me here. If I left, one of you'd get my job, and you'd be smirking at me, saying, sorry, nothing today. I wouldn't smirk at you. You wouldn't get the job. I see. I'm totally unemployable. Message received and understood. Loud and clear. Goodbye. Roger and Alf. Hello. Um, admit it, not absolutely sure whether you exist or not. If you do exist, give me a sign. Tried to live a decent life. Reward, down to last 10p. Total consumption, last two days. Rolls one, cheese. Stale. Always tried to do my bit. Help this world of ours. World failed to reciprocate. Forgive me if you exist. But they do say you help those who help themselves. Good morning. Good morning.
Harry Kitchener Wellington Truscott. You have no talent for crime. In choosing the church in which you were to commit this despicable deed, you unerringly selected one newly fitted with a burglar alarm by a vicar who plays rugby for the Harlequins. Oh. With this one act, you have besmirched a record of unblemished mediocrity. Now, this is a crossroads for you. Find a new career, or you will go down, down, down to degradation. Find a sense of purpose, or you will be destroyed. Find gainful employment, or you will find yourself back here. Find 50 pounds. Where will I find 50 pounds? What on earth are you doing? Go away. Get up, you fool. Go away. Everything's all right. Committing suicide, that's all. You'll be lucky. This line was closed three months ago. Hello there. We meet again. Oh. Yes. Bad business, then. Are you going anywhere in particular? Yes. You're not going to throw yourself into the weir, are you? I might. No, 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 you mustn't. Now stop it! Leave me alone, woman! Oh, stop it this instant! Now stop it! I love you! I knew it from the first moment I saw you on the railway line. I love you madly! Did you really, um, at the weir, what you said about uh, loving me, I think it was. Madly, I believe, was the word. Did you really mean that? Of course I didn't. You lied to me. Should have learnt by now, treacherous chaps, women. You trifled with my affections. I trifled with stopping you throwing yourself into the weir. Ah, yes. You might have regretted it later. Never. Fact is... A really low ebb in despair. I'm very glad to hear it. Pardon? God help you if you throw yourself into the weir when you're feeling really cheerful. Ah. Uh, sorry. A mess. Yes, you are. Sorry. Had a run of bad luck. I hate self-pity. It's useless. I have no use for useless things. Haven't you ever felt... Yes. I've snapped out of it. Gone riding. Taken up flower arranging. Done good. Well, good. I'm extremely good at doing good. Good, good. If you can't snap out of it, you may as well throw yourself into the weir. Should have known better than to seek sympathy from a woman. Might as well call on Adolf Hitler to borrow some sugar. Where are you going? Somewhere I don't advise you to follow. Oh, no, not into the weir. No, the gents. in some damn fool exercise on Lunaberg Heath. But it was innocent. She was under stress. She needed a break. She got one. A double fracture of the left leg. I did the shopping for two months. Well, it's all water under the bridge now, Harry. And the drinks you bought, the United Nations observers on my mess bill, are more whiskey under the bridge, I suppose. Friends like you, who needs enemies? Get to end it all. Jump, jump, splash, splash. Good wins, bad rubbish. Harry, no! 90,000 pounds! 
You must be joking. I haven't got a bean. No, you idiot. I'm not asking for it. I've got it. I've been left it. I've been left £90,000. I was wondering if you'd be interested in sharing it with me. Thank God for that. The do-good has gone. Have you really been left 90 shh, shh, shh. Walls have ears. Two large whiskies, please. Oh, thanks, Beamish. Make a change to the mess. You buy me drinks. Have you really been left 90,000 green jobs? Yes, this rich aunt died. Two pounds for please, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, have you got any money, eh? You haven't been left much. Shh, shh, shh. Walls have ears. You haven't been left 90,000 shh, shh, shh. Yes, I have, and I can't get used to having it. I've got to get a cheque. You may have something. This is all I have in the world, Venus. 17p, one toothpick and two baro tops. I don't need 15p. Thank you. Oh, Good, I'll keep the 2p for emergencies. Cheers. Cheers. How's your wife? Married to an eye tie. Oh, I'm sorry. So is he, I hope. And the boys? Hardly see them now. She's turning them into regular little eye ties. Fruit of my loins, stinking of garlic. I am sorry. Oh, water under the bridge. Treacherous chap, life. Had a plan once, Tim. Purpose to Harry Truscott's brief residence on Johnny Earth. Failed. No ackers. Plan, plug hole. You've changed all that. I've changed all that? Half your 90,000 come in handy. Chap could live a few years on that if he kept off the smoked salmon. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when you said you'd share the 90,000, you did mean equally, didn't you, Curly? I knew it. You haven't been left Shh, like... walls have ears. You haven't been left 90,000 smackers. Yes, I have, but I'm not going to share them with you. Well, why did you tell me you would, you rat? To stop you chucking yourself into the briny. Ah, point. Thanks. What did you do for Lolly before your aunt snuffed it? I'm a self-employed businessman. My card. Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Beamish. Well, it's a nice, long, impressive-sounding rank. To go higher is dangerous, to go lower is pointless. The whole nation is awash with clapped-out majors. Thanks. Lieutenant Colonel Timothy Beamish, VC, investment consultant, Dunkirk House. It's all good for business, Harry. Whole of British history, Dunkirk, our most glittering defeat. Every nation, glorious victories, ten a penny, only us. Glorious defeat. It takes a real rat to foul the memory of that with this. <laughs> I've had them specially strengthened. Not surprised. Investment consultant. Swindling old ladies out of their savings, more like. Well, delightful though this chat is, I have to go. I have an appointment. Off you go, then. Wouldn't want to interfere with your work, which is of such national importance. You'll be all right, will you, Harry? I expect so. Meeting you has cheered me up. Oh, good. Ex-colleagues, swindling old ladies. Makes me feel better by comparison, seeing what a bastard you are. You swine. Bastard. Not you, him. Aunt leaves him 90... Oops, all's heavy as. Ah, there you are. Good Lord. Didn't expect to see you again. Acted hastily, old friend. Apologise. I regret my attitude. All allegations of irregularity regarding parenthood withdrawn, sir. Oh, come in. We might as well find out what it is that you want. Come on. I say. I say. Nice, isn't it? Nice room. 
Nice furniture. Nice decanters. When did you meet Monty? Well, I didn't actually meet him. Actually. Well, not in the sense of meeting him. No, a, a chap I know rigged that up. It's a... Uh, it's what they call a montage. A Monty montage. You're a total fraud, Beamish. Uh, to what do I owe the sparkling pleasure of this visit? Doesn't follow, Beamish, because I visit you that I want anything. Shouldn't judge the whole world by your own standards. What do you want? I just wondered, um, Curly, if you could uh, see your way to lend me some lolly. How much? Oh, uh, say, 50 quid. Fact is, borrowed it off a of blighter, and Cove wants it back pretty damn pronto. Got himself in a bit of a hole, asked for it within seven days, couldn't refuse. Magistrate, was he? You might have told me you knew, Beamish. Anyway, how about it? You can afford it. Lovely room, lovely furniture. Cut glass decanters, filled to the brim. You, virtual layabout, rich. Me, full of amazing plans. Truscott's mission in life. No Ackers. Ironical blight of life. What couldn't I do with even half of 90,000 pounds? Beamish, I've had a thought. Good Lord. Why don't we do a deal? I'll let you share in my great work. You let me share your 90,000 green jobs. Oh. Not much point, I suppose, if you're doing so well in your investment racket. Well, no, I'm not, Harry. I'm a total flop as an investment consultant. People just... People just don't seem to believe in me. You told me everyone always believed you, and I believed you. I was lying. I don't believe you. It's the truth. I'm almost as big a flop as you are. You are? That's wonderful. God, you're a heartless bastard. No, 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 don't get me wrong. No, not delighted that you're a total flop. No, shame that. No, just delighted. Well, I'm a total flop. Precisely. Means you're free to help me in my mission. Isn't it about time you explain to me exactly what this mission is? I plan to command a secret army that will save Britain when the balloon goes up. Good God. That's shaken you, hasn't it? Harry Truscott in a new light. A secret army? Yes. You? Yes. I need a drink. I tell you my life's dream. What do I get? Praise, respect, enthusiasm? No, I need a drink. The mediocrity's response to anything out of the ordinary. I need a drink. Would you like one? Whiskey, please. Say when. Oh, sorry, forgot. Damn. When? Thanks. Cheers. Honestly, Beamish, I thought you might take my idea seriously. Hadn't seen you as a leader of men, Harry. Precisely. What? What state is the world in? Mess. Who got it into mess? Leaders. Far back as you care to look. Nations, armies, religions. Who've they all been led by? Leaders. Out there, Curly, is a sad, sick, complicated world. Maybe it doesn't need a leader. Maybe it needs a simple soldier's view of things. Join me, Curly. Help me build a world fit for unemployed ex-officers to live in. A world where order is law. Law is the order rather than the exception. Decency is not a dirty word. Honor is satisfied. And the British lion is no longer a dead duck. Look, Harry. I've decided to give you the money. Thank you very much, Beamish. Decent of you. With 45,000 pounds, I can no, really no, no, begin... No, Harry. I've decided to give you the 50 pounds for the magistrate. You... Thanks, Beamish. Decent of you. Thanks. Wish I got a camera. First time you've ever given me anything. You are an ungrateful swine. You're a selfish bastard.
Curly. Join me, Curly. Well, how can the two of us work together? You've just said I'm a selfish bastard, and I think you're a pompous, prickish prat. Precisely. Friendship turns to betrayal. Love withers into indifference. Hatred lasts. You and I could have the perfect working relationship. Never have any illusions about each other, so never be disappointed. Never trust each other, so never be deceived. Well, how can the two of us start a secret army? is isn't just the two of us, Beamish. A list of old colleagues as long as my arm. Well, how many old colleagues of ours will support a secret army run by you? Second Lieutenant Bagnall? Yes, you might. Sergeant Major Throttle? Yes. Corporal Wilcox? Possible. Lots of people seem to think I'm a chap worth following. Get some odd types in the army. Oh, yes. No shortage of supporters, I can assure you. Great Britain, do not despair. Truscott is coming. But if you've got all these supporters, why has nothing happened? No Ackers. Haven't had a fundraiser. Need chap with uh, talent for fundraising. How about it? Oh, I don't know. I'm happy here, Harry. No need to move, Beamish. This house for the grounds and outbuildings be an A1 HQ. Imagine it, Curly. Whole caboose transformed. Whole caboose alive with right-thinking chaps. Supporters, sympathizers. Planning, plotting, training. Saluting, obeying. <laughs> I must say, that sound rather fun. Harry, I'm your man. Splendid. Well done, Beamish. Not a transvestite, are you? Offers off if you're a transvestite. I'm not a transvestite, Harry. Glad to hear it. Splendid news. Well done, that man. They're my sisters. You never told me you had a sister. You never asked. Cheers. Cheers to the three of us. To the three of us. The three of us? Well, my sister. She'll have to be in on all this. Oh, no, no can do, sorry. A soldiering and women don't mix. No, sister. That's an order, Captain Beamish. Oh, come on. Don't you start pulling rank. Only thing I can pull these days. <laughs> no. Listen, Tim, please. Men, Salisbury Plain, Russians hold Tidworth. Bang, bang, you're dead. Tremendous. Can you imagine Petula Clark, burnt cork on face, doing leopard crawl to reach cone-shaped bush and give NATO allies covering fire? Game girl, but not on. No, foot down, Beamish. Fair sex, plug hole. This is her house. What? The aunt left me the money and her the house to keep us together. Oh, hell. No, don't you worry, Harry. All is not lost. I'll just say that you come to stay for a few days. Well, pretend you're a friend. Thanks. Well, get her on your side and there's a jolly good chance she'll let you carry on with your plans. Get her on my side. Right. Here she comes now. Impress her. Impress her. Will do. Chat her up. Flatter her. Flatter her. Say no more. Play on her femininity. Utilize your charm. Utilize my charm. Message received and understood. <laughs> oh my God, it's the bloody do-gooder. <laughs> <laughs>